Jesus is the light of the world. It's Jesus we sing about, we worship. That's why we come here on a, on a Sunday morning, gathered here and cramped together like sardines in the name of Jesus to give him all the praise, honor, and glory. And that phrase that we say at the end, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. Now, it's very significant because it's what separates and divides us from unification with our Heavenly Father. And our life on this earth is but a mitz, mist, mitz, small time. We're only here small kind, small time on this earth. But all of eternity, we have this amazing opportunity because of Jesus to dine with him. I'm going to be playing football with him. I'm just going to be honest. We're going to be throwing the football around in heaven with my heavenly body. I'm looking forward to my heavenly body so I can finally say I'm six feet tall without shoes. I want to share with you this verse that is really significant that we can just pass by from John 15, 15. And Jesus is looking into the eyes of not only his disciples, but his friends. He says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. And how many of you guys know that's good news that our God doesn't sit on this crazy planet a million miles away and have you do all of his bidding as a crazy ruling master but instead he comes as a servant a light into the world and he looks into our eyes and he calls us friends so father i thank you lord that we can stand here just justified by faith because of your price that you paid on the cross that you did that sacrifice so that we could be unified with our father in heaven and not only that what an amazing experience to know that on this side of eternity you have called us friend and with that lord god will do anything for you i will do i will lay down my life for my friends you have laid down your life for us because we are your friends and we thank you in jesus precious name and all of god's people said amen let's give a bigger amen for god and a clap offering to him because he's so good welcome to pro side church here at coppola you may be seated before you do around you just give a little air high five a knuckle bump elbow just don't knock them in the eye okay our insurance only goes so far <laughs> I'm Pastor Wade. Welcome to our church. I see some new faces in your, our house is open to you. Welcome. Uh, if you're visiting and from all across the earth, this is home. Whenever you're here in the islands, please come and hang out uh, with us. And we're just so glad to let you know that we are here to know God, follow God, discover our purpose, and help others do the same by making a difference in their lives. And we have some amazing upcoming classes that Uncle Al is gonna help lead and direct. And if you need any information, okay, I say this a lot, we're trying to build up our social media game is maybe not the strongest next to some of those crazy big mega churches out there, but we're gonna break the, the 100 follower mark pretty soon. And if you're not following, you could be the one that could take us over the threshold. And on those uh, social media platforms, gonna give you all the information that you need to know for what's moving forward as a church family. Can I pause for a second and give some shout outs to our U team last night? Um, they did an amazing job, Joash, in the JB, um, Jen, and the team came together and not only did like, so we could do games all night, we can do fun things and gather crowds, but the word was delivered. I know Devin brought a, a timely word. They're like, well, I thought Wade was going to share. I thought Abu was going to share. I was like, no, we're building up the team. We got a stable of people and, and, and speakers that can build with this next generation. And this next generation as a teacher, I'm telling you, like, they'll see right through you. 
They'll look right through you to see if you are the real stuff, you're the real deal. And I know they're, they're coming because our youth team is doing an excellent job building them up. And I think there's about 60 people in the house yesterday, outdoors, so outside, in the house of God, but outside by the pool. And praise God, no one, see, I think Stormy told me, like, hey, how come we couldn't put our head underwater? It's just safety. We're just trying to be safe. And then, you know, the only time they'll let us put our head underwater is when we do baptisms. So you can get ready for that. But without any further ado, to give you the word this morning as we are experiencing godly friendships in our series, Relationship Revolution. Give it up for our long lost brother who hasn't been here in a minute. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll say it. He's been traveling. He's been traveling. He's getting his son ready for football and for college. And it's like, you know, we got to let go, man. We got to let him go. Let him, let him fly. We did last year, right? We let him go. And it's just, we're trying to grab the chain. And they're, he's trying to be a grown man, Levi back there. So without any further ado, give it up for Coach Abu Ma'afala. Which I'd like to point out that his amazing shirt that he's wearing, those things are ma'afalas, right? Correct, they are. There's a specific brand of ma'afala, like breadfruit, and you're rocking them, and the Lord told me to buy you that shirt, so <laughs> enjoy. Well, thank you, Lord, for appointing Wade. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Oh, come on now. You guys are in my meeting room. You guys are my players right now. So put your feet flat on the ground. Sit up straight. And this is a conversation that we're having, okay? We're good? Good morning, church. How are we doing? Thank you. Amen. Well, yes. Thank you for welcoming me back. I am your, I am your long lost brother. I promised I wasn't being the prodigal son, okay? So, uh, but before we get started, I just wanted to give you guys the crazy six weeks that uh, my wife and my, my family experienced. So, first picture this is May 14th. There it is. So May 14th, right? I don't, know if we're, I don't know if we're geniuses or we're the biggest idiots in the world, but we decided to have our son's graduation party before graduation. All right. So it was a lot of planning, a lot of stress. Um, a lot of that went into that. So that was that week. And then a week and a half later, my son graduated. Woohoo! Proud moment, right? Mom and dad, he's, he's a legacy kid from Kamehameha. Um, he went off, and, and it's, it was an amazing experience to be back in, people meeting again, and, and being able to, that, that thing that he's wearing, that blue thing, it's called a kihei. You give it to somebody that uh, you allow, they're given the privilege to tie the kihei on them. And uh, surprisingly, my son allowed me to tie his kihei, even though I gave him a whole bunch of heaven when he was on campus for four years. Uh, it, was, it was a proud moment. Um, and then... Uh, right after that week, the week later, I had to go to a conference in Dallas, and so the family came up, and we were trying to fly standby on Southwest, but the flights were crazy, so we just decided to drive from Dallas, Texas, and we were heading to Illinois, uh, to Bourbonnet, Illinois, but we stopped in St. Louis, Missouri, and this was the first time we ever stopped, about a nine-hour drive. It was fun. Uh, we got to see the St. Louis uh, Arch, and that was the greatest American invention that I've ever seen. There, I've, I've, I've been able to see many things across this country. I couldn't say anything about this. I was just in awe. It's overwhelming. If you ever get an opportunity, go see the arch because it's, it's an incredible sight. And then we spent a day or two there. And then we spent our last week or week and a half, 10 days. Uh, we took Levi up to uh, Olivet Nazarene University, which is where he's going to be attending college. They had new student orientation and they also have a uh, a mini camp, an athletic mini camp where he got to meet his coaches and, and um, he, he had fun. We checked him into the dorms, we sent him away and Marlene and I went through the, the five stages of grief every day <laughs> um, because it was, like I said, it's, so Bourbonnet, Illinois is about an hour outside of Chicago so it's in, it's in farm town, right? Cornfields, all right? And so we were we, we raised them in the Midwest. I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be nothing. And then we, this time, for some reason, whatever, I think it was just more of me not being able to let go. Um, we cried every day, all right, thinking about are we going to leave this guy here. But I just wanted to recognize some special guests. Levi's new family that he's going to be doing life with in, uh, in Bourbonnais. We got um, Bob and Anita Harmon. 
and we have Beth and Mike Conway. So I want to tell you guys this now, all right? Those people have the Aloha Spirit, right? They have the Aloha Spirit because they have the Holy Spirit in them. And I'm so encouraged that my son is going to be doing life at this school because their motto is education with a Christian purpose. And they don't just talk about it, they are about it. And so I was able to experience their new student orientation, uh, hearing them speak openly about God and how it's going to be a part of their daily life. And so even me, as a dad, like I said, I never thought I was going to have these issues. Levi's ready to bust out of jail. Um, he's out. So he, want, he's, he's, uh, he wants to get out on parole, but Marlene and I are still kind of going through it. One day it's like, good, get out of here. You're a grown man. And the next day it's like, no, don't leave us. So uh, we're, we're doing our best. We're, we're subduing our emotions and wanting to buy a house in Bourbonnet, Illinois, <laughs> and telling him that it's so that we can rent it out and make money. But we, it's really about us plotting our next move because homes are like, I saw a home there. It's $250,000. I mean, it like we could. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, but yes, the, the Conways and, and the Harmons are here. They got to, uh, they did new student orientation um, for, there's going to be about, what is it, about 75, I mean, 75 kids from the Pacific Rim, from Hawaii, from Guam, um, from, from around the circle. And, and they are going to be the ones taking care of them. They have experience doing that. And so, uh, shameless plug. If you want your kid to have a great Christian education, all of it Nazarene is the place for you. All right. Yeah. Amen. OK, so wrapping up the series, talking about the relationship revolution. All right. And so um, prior to us going on vacation, it's I, I think no, I know it's, it was Marlena's way of beginning to deal with the fact that we're letting our kid go. She wanted to just purge everything in the house. Right. And if you know my wife, she's not a purger. I'm not going to say she's a hoarder, but she is a collector of things, okay? She collects everything. We still have in our garage, in storage, her textbooks from 2002 when she first went to college, okay? She's never cracked them open since the semester that she took the class, but they're still in our possession, right? And so what inspired her was this show called The Home Edit. Can I get an amen from the ladies in the house? Yeah, yeah, come on now, don't laugh. Can I get an amen from the ladies in the house, right? And if you don't know about the home edit, right, it's these two lovely ladies that started a business, and what they do is they come into your home, and they will, and they will get it, they will purge and do everything for it and make it look beautiful, right? And so they have these four stages to the show in what they do. They edit, they categorize, they contain, and they maintain, all right? And so they have these really cool, like, little tips, right, they give you, okay, when you have this space, you have to get storage that's vertical so that you won't waste any of the space. I see, I learned something. I mean, I got forced into watching the show. I, I'm glad my wife was watching that instead of um, the ultimatum, right? <laughs> I love you, babe. She's mad. But it was, a, she's mad at me right now. It's okay. But it was an opportunity for us to kind of clean ourselves up. So our upstairs closet, which is like our catch-all closet, right? She, she did that one. And so it was a major wreck. Towels here, towels there, towels everywhere. And she was able to take those principles that that show talked about. And now when you walk into it, it's just this beautiful, organized um, place <clears throat> where it's calm, right? It, it, doesn't give you it doesn't give me anxiety anymore walking in there like, man, I got to clean this up. You know exactly where everything is, and you can function that way. And so how much more is it like that in our relationships, right? Let's, let's take, take account of it. We, we have people that we know, people that we hang out with, people that want to know us, people that we want to know. All right? And sometimes we don't know how to edit, categorize, contain, and maintain those things. But the Bible does such a great job, and, and uh, Pastor or Dr. Darius Daniel is a pastor I listen to on podcasts, right? He says that our church, the American church, does a great job of teaching us the spiritual things but we need to do a better job of teaching our people the practical things in life. Okay, so this topic, we're going to talk about the relationship edit. Okay, that's the title of our message today. And what we're talking about is just, it's, it's not necessarily heaven or hell things, right? But it's about creating order, creating and containing your life so that you can have the best quality of life here on earth. Amen? Because let's, let's, let's be real, all right? Things are getting crazy. All kinds of riots, all kinds of things happening. 
right? I was in Bourbonnet, Illinois. I bought a, a half gallon of almond milk for $3, and I come back here, and it's 6 all right? I bought a pound of bacon for $3, and we're back here, and it's 10 So it's crazy, right? And so the more things that we can organize in our lives, it'll help us to get through this crazy world today. Amen? And so what, what Dr. Darius Daniels says is that who we choose today will determine where we are in our future. I'm going to say that again. Who we choose today will determine where we are in our future. All right, so let's pray, for, let's pray over this message. Let's get some word in us, and let's see if we can organize our lives so that we can, have, so we can be successful. Amen? Yeah. Spar heads. Dear Lord, precious Heavenly Father, we just humbly come before you, Lord. I thank you um, for your presence here, Lord Heavenly Father. We thank you that you came down onto this earth. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to not only die for our sins, but you modeled for us in the way that you want us to live so that we can overcome everything in this world. Jesus, you told us that we will have many troubles in this world, but take heart, you have, you have overcome it. So we ask you right now, Lord, that you open our hearts, you open our minds, you speak to your people. Lord, Father God, crush my will, speak through me, Lord, let them know what you need them to know so that they can be more than conquerors in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. If you can do me a favor and open up your Bibles, <clears throat> somewhere in the middle of the Bible, we're going to open up to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 7. And if you don't got it on there, it'll be up on the screens. So we're going to start here. Verse four, uh, verse 7 starts here. Then I returned, and I saw vanity under the sun. There is, no, there is one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors, nor his eyes satisfied with riches. But he never asked, for whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This is this also is vanity and a grave misfortune. Pay attention here. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Although one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So these words come from the great King Solomon. Again, a little bit of background, right? King Solomon was King David's son with Bathsheba. If you know the story, King David was at rest. His people were out at war. And he decided to stay back, right? He was walking around uh, on his rooftop, saw Bathsheba. And, and in his heart, some things went, went awry, right? Uh, he, cre he made a baby with Bathsheba and then had, uh, had Bathsheba's husband killed, all right? And then the product of that was the kingdom. He, he lived a life of disturbance after all of that, right? He, he reconciled with God. He apologized. God, I'm sorry. But after that, because of the consequences of his sin, he had a tough life after. But in the midst of it all, okay, and this is a good word for somebody, I don't know who's out there, that even in the midst of that mistake, something great can come out of it if God's hand is on it. Amen? So if you know about King Solomon, okay, King Solomon took over the kingdom when he was 20 years old. All right? And so the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and, and he said, Solomon, because of the faithfulness of your dad, okay, all of my kids in here listening, if you got faithful parents, you will be blessed. So he said, because of the faithfulness of your father, whatever you ask me for right now, I will give it to you. And so, and, and this could have been anything, right? Anything material, anything he wanted, God was going to bless him with it because of the faithfulness of his dad. And what he ended up doing was he said, Lord, I'm young. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So if you could just give me wisdom to run this kingdom for you, the way that you want me to run it, I'll do that. So God said, Solomon, that was a great choice. Not only am I going to give you all the wisdom in the world, but then I'll give you everything after. All right, so he got blessed. So um, he is, the Bible says that he is the wisest man to ever live before, and there will never be anybody wiser than him. There's only one person wiser than him, and that's Jesus himself and God. All right? And so in the middle of the Bible, we have what we call the wisdom literature. All right? That consists of five books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. All right? So Psalms, if you go through the Psalms, a lot of the Psalms were written by King David. You kind of understand why Solomon was such a wise dude, because when you read through Psalms and you see the heart of King David, 
you understand why God called him a man after his own heart. All right, so he got to take all of that in from his pops. Proverbs, just like anything in any culture, and even in other religions, they have wise sayings. And it's just a collection of wise sayings that Solomon had that, that um, historians say that he didn't just get from his dad. He collected from other wise sages that were around him at the time of his reign. Ecclesiastes, this book that we're, we're, we're in, is actually Solomon experiencing life. All right, so he had everything, right? He was the richest dude, smartest dude in the room. There was nobody smarter than him, right? One, one wise story was... Uh, Two ladies were fighting over a baby. They both said it was their baby. All right. So he prayed to God, said, God, help me, help me with this. And so what he told the ladies was, cut the baby in half. You can take one baby. You can take one half. You take the other. Right. One lady said, perfect. Cut them in half. And then the other lady was like, no, 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 don't. And give the baby over to the other lady. And that's how Solomon actually knew that who the baby belonged to. Right. You talk about wisdom. Right. I don't think I would have came up with that. Uh, so you can see that he was, there was nobody smarter than him, right? And when you are that smart, all right, like my wife, it's, it can be difficult to be in rooms with people. No, I'm just kidding, baby. Only with me, only with me, all right? But because the, there's such a high level of thinking going on, right, it gets difficult. And so what ended up happening was he had everything, he had all the riches in the world, and he just said, I am going to test everything out. In Ecclesiastes, he says that I am going to test everything under the sun. Okay, there was nothing that he couldn't have. There was nothing that he couldn't do. He, ex he, he went and experienced it all. And so in this book of Ecclesiastes, what he does is it's his summation of all of those experiences, right? He ate everything. He saw everything. I mean, even sinful things he, he indulged in. And what it all came back to was it's all meaningless, Right? The only thing that matters is what you do with your hands for God. Right? And part of it here in verse 4, he talks about us, is that we, were, we need to create community. Amen? Okay? We need to be with, we need other people in our lives. Back in the garden, right, God said that it's not good for man to be alone. Well, why would he say that? Because he wasn't alone. Right? At that point in time, all of creation was done. The animals were there, and even God was with him, right? So God acknowledges that we need people. We need a relationship with people in order for us to take this book and act it out, right? And it's, and it's a way for us to reprove ourselves, improve ourselves. If it's just us and God all the time, we don't have any way to gauge where we're at, amen? But it's also important especially in this world of social media and where we're at, that we, first of all, edit some people in our lives. And I know it's going to get kind of rough because we're going to have to come to, we're going to have to take account of who, are, who is in our lives, and we're going to have to go through those steps just like the home edit does. So the first one is we have to edit, all right? So I want to tell you what a friend is not. In Proverbs chapter 6, it says this, King Solomon tells us that a worthless person a wicked man walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. All right? And so these are the type of people, all right? It doesn't mean that we're not going to be in proximity of them, all right? It just means that we're not going to let them into our lives. You understand? We have to make sure that we take evaluation of, of those people that are with us and we're not allowing them to speak into our lives. Talking about winking his eyes, right? He's going to say one thing in front of you and then do something else behind your back. Shuffles his feet. He's not really consistent in what you need him to do. Points his fingers. It's everybody else's fault but theirs. Perversity in his heart. There is... He, everything is backwards, right? The, everything that should be, he says everything that's right is left, right? He's, you tell him the sky is blue, he says it's purple, all right? Things are different than what he sees. And the most important one, friends, is he sows discord, okay? Later on in those verses in chapter 6, sowing discord among people is something that God hates. So if you have people, and again, let's put the mirror in our faces, if you are creating discord and you're creating division among people, we got to stop that. 
and we also cannot allow those people to be a part of our lives because then that's what then we're going to turn into them. You guys understand? Okay? So as we go through our mind and the people that are there, we just got to learn where to place them. Okay? And they might not be able to be in the very close proximity of our daily lives. Amen? All right. So Dr. Darius Daniels, again, in his book, uh, Relational Intelligence, I, I encourage you, if you're having issues with your friends, this is a great, easy read for you to understand how to create boundaries, how to create, um, how to bring the right people in, and how to push the right people away, and, and create the things that you need so that you can live God's uh, ultimate life for you. He says that there's four types of relationships. So I'm going to tell you guys this right now. I know it's written down in there. All right. I always tell my players, make sure you got a pen and paper, take notes. We got our phone because I learned back in college when I was a donkey football player and all I cared about was playing football on Saturdays. They, they taught us that if you took notes, wrote it down, and reviewed it within the first 24 hours, you had like a 7 out of 10 chance of remembering everything you wrote down. All right. So all of my students in here, make sure you don't walk into class like I did with nothing in your hand to sit down in the class. So if you got a chance, take notes because this is important. Okay, four types of relationships, the categories that we have to put people, okay? The first one is our friends, okay? Second one are our associates. Third one are our assignments, and the fourth are our advisors. And how we differentiate where they are all comes down to the amount of time and energy that you are going to invest in them. And on the other end, how are they reciprocating that energy back unto you? All right, so friends, associates, assignments, and advisors. So we're just quickly going to go through the five things that we need to put uh, to categorize our friends, right, to bring them, let them be closest to us. The first one is this. Number one, a developed character. If they are going to be your friend, we have to ensure that they have a developed character. And for us in here, that means that they are doing their best to develop their character through the word of God. Amen? Okay? Because people can, can develop their character in all kinds of different ways. There's all kinds of self-help books out there that people are using to, to create better lives. All right? But understand that all of those books, they end up being derived from this one. So if we can just pick it up, read it. Again, the wisdom literature, reading Proverbs. If you read a proverb a day, I try to do that just to help me. I'm at the point where I know what it says. Now I got to go and act it. Amen. But here it says, Proverbs 13, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. All right. So this doesn't mean that you're a fool. All right. This means that you can have the developed character. You can be in here every single day, every single Sunday with us. You're in group during the week. You're reading the word. All right. But the statement is true. You are guilty by association. And so if you're putting in all this work and you are being, hanging out with fools, you will ultimately be destroyed. So we want to make sure that those that we are letting into our lives, speaking into our lives, right, those that we're willing to give of ourselves, that they have a developed godly character. They're developing it. All right. It's not going to we're all. Sinners saved by grace. Every day is a new day for us to get better. Amen? Okay? So there's nobody that's better than, than, they, than they need to be, and there's nobody that's worse as long as they're going here. Right? We say in football, it's never as bad as you think it is. All right? But it's also never as good as, as it could be. All right? And so, but as long as we are reading this word and we are choosing to walk around those who are wise, we will become wise. Right? They're going to rub off on you. Then another verse here in 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul tells us, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. So let's not negate all of the good work that we're doing just because homie from back in the day is still around and we're allowing them to be very close to us. You understand? It doesn't mean that you got to cut them out. It just means that we got to put some time and distance between us and them so that we can protect ourselves. Because it says here that evil company will corrupt your good morals. All the good work that you're doing, all right, can be gone in an instant if we are not guarding ourselves. Amen? Second one is this, and I, and I believe that ProSide does a great job of this, all right, and it's to have determined connection. 
A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Our groups, if you're not in a group, please get into one. All right, you're talking about people that are trying to develop their character, they're there, right? That's why they're there, and we have a determined connection. We have a set date that we meet each and every week in order for us to process life through the filter that we need it to be, which is the Word of God. And that, and that is an easy way for us to find those friends that we want to do life with. And I see it all the time. I thought it was awesome, pass away, that we had the golf outing, right? Men, godly men, getting together, doing, doing manly things. I don't know if everybody is good at golf. I'm not. I would be the cart driver, all right? And I would be the caddy grabbing the clubs out. Yeah, I think, yeah, use the putter to go drive it 300 yards. But a determined connection and and wives, this one is important, all right? You got to let your husband go out and do manly things with godly men. Amen. We have to. <laughs> okay? Ladies, I promise you, the other ladies in this room will do five laps at Target without batting an eye with you over your husband. But it's important, okay? The ancient Hawaiians, they practiced this form of martial arts, and what it was about, especially for men, ladies, so you understand. They got their aggression out with other men so that they could come home and be the docile leader that they needed to be. If, they are, if they never have an outlet, and again, I'm not talking about a night out on the town with the boys, okay? Men, we don't go to bars and clubs anymore, amen? Okay? We go to eat blooming onions at... Uh, out back, okay? We might go play paintball or something, okay? But we're not going to Mai Tais. All right, man, I just want to be clear, okay? But you got to allow them that outlet because we're supposed to be gruff and mean and grouchy and angry because that's how we protect you. But if we can never get all of that out, guess who it gets taken out on? You! I see, I, I see it all, I'm fine, I get to go to play, I get to coach football all day. I get to go yell at a bunch of kids for about four hours a day, so I'm pretty okay when I get home, okay? But I, I'm hoping next time we have a golf outing, I can go drive somebody around on the cart, all right? But it's important because those are where the connections are made. And in those connections, right, is where we get to talk about the like-minded things that we're learning in here. Because there might be somebody here in a church that they're not in my group, but I want to connect with them because I see a similarity. I see similarities in our family, and I want to come together. My wife's group is another great example. All ladies. I mean, Ray, they pass the time limit thing every week. <laughs> I mean, it's like a three-hour. They, they blame it on the kids playing at the playground. But it's a great opportunity for them to connect. Amen? Can, I, can my wife's group say Amen. Amen, okay? And I love it because they need it. And when I have conversations with my wife and the things that she's able and the, uh, she's able to build with her group and the amount of trust that she's built with these ladies, it's like anything else. Unlike anything else, it's, un it's nothing I can give her from what she gets on those Tuesdays and in the text thread that they have during the week and the prayers and the things that they do. So that's why group is important, everybody in here. Sunday is not enough. Okay? If we're walking this thing out, it's a walk. It's not a run on Sunday and then chill for six days. All right? That sounds like my, uh, my workout schedule. All right? It's an everyday consistent thing, and it's a determined connection because in this world, let's face it, it's easy for us not to connect. Okay? And when I'm talking about connecting, I'm talking about being with the brethren. All right. It, it is. Yes, we have technology and it's great, but we cannot just say that, oh, I'm just going to I am going to forfeit the opportunity to meet, meet face to face because it's convenient. It's easy. Right. It has to be a determined connection with a few people in order to create that that desire to do life. Amen. Number three, and I'm working on this one. It's a disciplined candor. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. 
All right. This is why we got to be connected and in relationship, because we have to get to the point where we're able to speak the truth in love to each other. Because if anybody's not going to do it, who's going to do it? Okay. And again, sorry, my, my wife is going to chew me out. She, my wife says all the right things. She tells me all the things I need to hear. But I don't necessarily want to hear from my wife. Somebody else could tell me the same thing, and guess what? I come home and I say, oh, babe, you know, you know what they told me today? <laughs> Amen, ladies? Amen, right? Amen, right? And I get caught with that. But that takes time to get built. Even I am not comfortable, Pastor Wade will tell you, all right, I'm a man of extremes. I'm either all the way passive or I'm all the way aggressive. So I'll let it go, let it go, let it go. And then you piss me off and irritate me enough, you come into my office and I start slamming my hand on the desk, telling you about yourself. That's not good either. Because that's not building love and trust with each other. I have to learn how to be able to have difficult conversations with people I love without exploding at them. And that's who I am. Okay, I'm so conditioned to just let it go. And then I come home and I... And I complain to my wife, and then she gets pissed, and then, and, then, and then I go and explode, and then I come home and tell her what happens, and then she gets mad again, right? So this is an art. It's a skill, all right? But who better to do that stuff with, again, with your friends? Because if you can practice it within your friend group, now as we branch out into the associates and the assignments in your life, and even with the, the, the advisors, all right? You'll learn that skill, and you will, you'll have a successful life in theory, okay? And again, this is a theory. You shouldn't have any troubles at work if you can develop this skill, all right, on your end, okay? They might have all the issues with them, but if you can develop this skill and have a disciplined candor and learn how to tell people the truth without being angry, this will take you a far way, amen? Number four. Dependable encouragement. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. I am currently using my football team as a model for this. All right? It, it is so um, important that you can develop this skill as well. Learning how to encourage somebody. All right? And what, and what I told our team the other day is, in this world, because of social media and other factors, Okay? We've become such an unsure people. We doubt ourselves. Everybody sitting here today, right? even though we make it look like we're all good, inside of our hearts, we, ha we have anxiety. Amen? Are we lying? Right? My I, I saw something. I was, at, I was at this conference, right? And they talked about influencers. And it's amazing that there's, I, I didn't know this, Pastor Wade. Okay? There's influencers that will go uh, on big screens like this, pull up like a cool backdrop, right? Go, go buy a $7 toilet seat, hold it up, take a picture, and make like they're traveling to like Bali or something. You know, there was, there was, they showed one where this girl was showing that she was on her fantabulous vacation. She's taking all her pictures in Ikea. Like people are literally walking around the store and she's having a photo shoot in a bathtub in Ikea for the likes, right? But again, it's just a symptom of what's happening. It's the way the enemy has been able to get us to be all sure of each other, unsure of each other. Right? So we all have these anxieties in our heart that we don't know. And because we all catch ourselves looking at our phone, all right, we don't have the eyes to see that our buddy needs encouragement. Because sometimes the person to your left and to your right believes in you more than you believe in yourself. And we had, we had a, a player come and speak to our team that, that, that played uh, for one of our coaches at Moana Lua High School. And he said that I went on chasing the dream because that guy believed in me. I didn't even believe that I could do it. But we've, we've become so conditioned because we see uh, facades of people's lives, we don't work on this and, and encourage people. We only encourage them when it's like, Death Con 5, and they are in the middle of the largest storm that they're in. But a true friend, a great friend, knows that they, there's dependable encouragement. That means they can lean on you. They don't even know that they need to lean on you. You're willing to encourage them. 
Amen? Because it makes their heart glad. We, you know, when, when you receive what, what people are telling you, and again, I'm the type of person, it's hard for me to receive people telling me and encouraging me. It's not. Because the, the, the voice in my own head, the devil, right, is playing with my brain and telling me, don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. But dependable, if we can keep it going, and you're speaking godly encouragement into somebody's life, guess what? You can push the enemy out, and you can walk the way God has called you to walk. Amen? Last one, uh, praise and worship team, if you want to come up here. Our last point is the deepest love. Okay, so we found, we developed the character. We've, we, we created determined connection, disciplined candor. We're encouraging them. The last one is this, is we create the deepest love for our friends. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 15, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. He then goes on to say in verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. And what can we, what can we glean from this? In verse 15, it's a picture of what a friend should be to you. I have called you friends because I have told you all things my father has told me. Meaning that you are willing to open up your heart to this person and tell them the deep things. Right? When we talk about what God was telling Jesus, it was the deepest things ever. And so understand that if the few people in your life, and there's only should be a few, okay, outside of your spouse who are your friends, that you are willing to speak the deepest and the deepest and darkest things to, and that you can trust them, and that you are willing to let them in. Because no greater love than this, folks, that you lay down your life. What does that mean? Is that I'm willing to put their needs above mine in situations. That no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through, I am willing to put them above me. I am willing to lay down whatever I need to do for myself to push them over the top. And that's what Jesus did. He had thousands of disciples. He sent out 70 he only called 12 his friend. While he was willing to lay down his life, and he did, he gave up his life, his physical life, right? There's only 12 of them that he let them in because he could trust them. And so as I was going through this message, it was less about me going through who are the people in my life and where I got to put them, and it was more about am I exemplifying these things to people? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not. A lot of conviction in my heart because I am not doing these things. I am not being a friend. But if we can do this, folks, edit and contain these things, right? And then from there, we just maintain it. You will have the greatest life that God meant for you to live. A lot of us in here, we're, we, we are there. We are sold in for Christ. We're going to heaven. You punched your ticket. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life but they're still even greater than what God wants for us here. Amen? He doesn't want us just waiting around before to, for him to send Jesus down. He wants us, again, to be the example to the world that when we follow the things that he calls us to do, that life is even better beyond anybody could ever imagine. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard the things that God has in stores for those who love him. Amen? Let's get up and let's praise and worship time we are going to come to the table of communion to remember this sacrifice that we sing about the elements will be passed out uh, on the sides of you just pass it out help, help them out everyone should have a communion element Jesus the night before he was betrayed brought his friends together it wasn't his just followers it wasn't just his disciples nor servants but what Coach Abu was talking about, he brought his friends together and he said, every time that you come to this table and you dine on a big fat piece of ribeye and there's bread and there's grape juice, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember the sacrifice that was poured out for your lives because I'm your friend. 
And greater love has no one than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. Father, we thank you as we come to this table of communion. We thank you for your sacrifice. And even our minds that are so finite, we can't understand the depth in which your sacrifice means to our salvation. But we receive it, Lord. We receive it like arms open wide. You receive us as far as your arms were stretched on the cross. That's how far you separate our sin as far as the east is from the west. And we remember that as we partake in communion today. At this time, could you peel back that first layer on your cup? Father, this is a piece of bread that symbolizes and represents your body broken for us. And that we know that you took a punishment so that we didn't have to. And that reconciled our lives and for our generations to come because of your broken body on the cross. God, we thank you so much for what you did. And so we now pick up our cross Lord, for those that are around us that don't have you in their lives, God, let our hearts break for those that don't know you, just like your body was broken on the cross. Bless this bread as we partake together in Jesus' name. You may partake of the bread at this time. Please peel back the second layer. And this represents the the blood that was poured out for you. It is a cleansing. And this makes your, your slate white as snow, brand new. You are a new creation in him for those that receive the blood of Christ. And Lord, we thank you so much for your sacrifice. The blood that was shed and spilt was so that we could have the final sacrifice so that we could be forever with you in eternity we thank you bless this cup in jesus name you may partake of the cup lord i want to pray a special blessing over our church family right now we thank you lord that you have inspired us father to understand what true godly relationships look like and how we can walk them out father even right now Give us your strength and your heart as a friend so that we can befriend befriend those around us to draw them closer and closer to you. God, we thank you so much. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' precious name and all of God's people said, amen and amen. Let's give God a wonderful clap. You may be seated at this time. There's, my, my grape juice tasted a little um, wine-esque. We're ordering a new batch. Um, don't worry, the ex- expiration date is still good. It's fine wine, man. It needs to be aged. And so I just looked, double-checked, make sure the bread was not moldy, and it was good. So I just wanted to thank you. We haven't done communion in a very hot minute. And so typically on the closing of a series, we'll come at the table of communion. At this time, we're going to continue our worship in giving to God what he rightfully already owns. It's within our tithes and our offerings. Um, as, As amazing as Jesus is sent into this world as the light of the world into darkness, this is straight from John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his best. Abu is going to give his son to an amazing school and an amazing football program, but Levi's gonna come back and he's gonna be part of his, you know, growing up in his life. When God looked into heaven and said, what is it gonna take to rectify, to reconcile this planet that is forever gonna be separated from me because I love my children? God said, I gotta give 
my absolute best. And I always say this, he didn't choose some random angel that had like underdeveloped wings and said, okay, I'm gonna send this weak sauce angel and it looks good, but it, I'm not gonna go ahead and give you my best. No, God said, I have to give you my best. I have to give you my son. And he sowed his son into this earth so that we could have eternity for with God for all of eternity. And so when we give, let's give God our best. Let's not give God our leftovers and look into the, the crumbs. And I know that gas eats better than me right now. I'm telling you, I feel it too. I'm looking at the palm. I was like, I've never bought food like that. My truck is eating way better than me. And but I know that God provides. And I know that through seasons of famine and season of affluence that we could walk blessed and we can walk uh, knowing that all of our needs will be provided for when we give to God what he rightfully deserves first. We give him our best first. Father, we thank you so much that you've sowed into this world your son. You sowed into this world your best. And so the return of that is the reconciliation of men and women throughout history that choose to honor and follow you. So with that same heart, as we look at our finances, Father, in the season that we're living in, where everyone is preaching gloom and doom and inflation, we know that you are in control. And we are not going to be bounded by what the world tells us and be afraid to let go of what you rightfully own already. We give it to you freely. As our hands are released, we're able to steward what you want to pour out in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Can you receive that this morning? I really want to encourage you. Like I know that it's going to be a tough season ahead. I, as a visionary, I kind of look at trends and see what we're about to walk through. And I know that there's some practical things, you talk about practical things, that we can walk through with you. And that's why we have classes that help you steward your money and help you steward your finances for times like we are walking in right now. Amen. I challenge, and we do challenge our sons because they're good at making friends. They're good at they're good at making friends. They're good at getting them into their circles. What they're challenged with is inviting them to church and getting to the like, church is a big part of their lives. And we'll invite this one kid. His name is Maka. He's like 30 pounds and he's going to be in ninth grade and he's trying out for a team and it's like a health risk. I know, <laughs> but he has the heart of a lion and he is like that heart of David that is like, I'm not scared one lick to go in front of guys that are five times my size. And uh, we went training. Um, on a hill, we did some hill workouts on Saturday, not because dad wanted or coach wanted. They initiated this thing. I said, I'm, I'm going to take you to and, and work out on the hill. And I brought my cleats too, and I was running on the hill. And uh, I said, Zio, you got you to gotta invite this kid to our youth. Our, it's like the easiest invite that you could possibly do. There's free food, and there is going to be an amazing message and there's going to be the pool, but God is going to meet him and God is going to do something and mark his life. And I was so blessed that Maka came to our youth outreach last night because he not only became a friend, he made a, he made a friend, you want to be a friend, and then we want to invite a friend into our circles. And not just, okay, you are going to compartmentalize you, and you're my buddy here. We just do surfing, or we just do blank. At some point, we as Christians need to look into their lives and know that their eternity is hinged upon their decision on this earth to follow Jesus. And we might be the only bridge that they are ever given. And so whatever you need to do, to refresh and reset our mindsets, to build that bridge and to make that friendship, we gotta do that, amen? So already start marking that thing like in your mind, that person in your mind, like man, I'm such, a, this person is amazing and they know this part of me. And that I want you to take that next step and start bringing them around. Where do we bring them? It's like, I don't know, they are gonna be able to take all of this. Well, come Monday night, 
Monday night with this amazing gym night. It's in Pearl City, and we just have fun, and they can meet people, and then we have other types of activities, small groups throughout the week where you can invite a friend into our setting because the body of church, Christ, is you. It's not the building. So invite them into your lives. Get them here. We're going to see God do an amazing work in and through your lives for the people he wants to reach. Amen. Let's all rise up to our feet. Stand up strong. Flat feet on the ground, Coach Abu said. My voice is like this because I'm like screaming at kids too. Like I have like the younger team on our program and it's amazing to invest into their lives. But I want to empower you today to be that blessing in someone else's life. I'll go throughout this week looking on the hunt like a linebacker's trying to get a quarterback, like a, a receiver's trying to get to the end zone. Be relentless in trying to find that one person that you can love into the kingdom of God. Amen. On the count of three, we'll say our king's name that is above all names. The power and the blessing is in the name of Jesus. Jesus on three. Jesus on me. One, two, three. Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed rest of your day. God bless. Ahuiho. Malamapono.